most of uh, all the fear tactics that have been around this, and every every reason why somebody gives an excuse why why they wanted it to, to vote yes and pass a ban on gay marriage, most of them are can be so, all debunked, you know, as some kind of false idea or whatever. But one that I read last night, they were all worried about how it was going to affect their children, like a straight couple that was anti-gay or whatever, how it was going to affect their children. And I just, to me, I'm like, you should be teaching your children what you want them to know in your home, at home. Like, and, and it's the same thing with how it's going to weaken your marriage, somebody's marriage. I'm like, well, how can, I don't, I just don't understand how can weaken someone else's marriage. But like, <laughs> it's between you two. Right. Like, and what you teach your children at home, I mean, well, if you're really religious and you believe in these principles, I mean, like, because I was raised Mormon, I mean, every single day, 5 o'clock a.m., scripture reading, you know, and, you know, seminary every day, and, and uh, you know, prayer three times a day, and home meeting, and blah, blah, blah. Like, we, our parents made sh sure that they were telling us what, what they want, how they wanted us, how they wanted us to think. Now, the principles well, what that they, they wanted to sure. teach. So... Like, I, I don't get because it's a whole false notion about, oh, they're going to teach gay marriage in schools, which is a false well, idea. The, the, but the thing is, even if they even if they do, I mean, let's, let's just they take, don't, well, let's they just don't, take it to, they don't let's just kind of take regular it, marriage. let's just take it kind of to the extreme. Let's say that they did. Yeah, and then, like, who cares? Let, let's say that they did. You should be did. learning let's at home what your yeah, family believes. Yeah, it's, it's, I think even more and more in, you know, as... We we're getting into you know what are what movies Mormons consider the the last days. More and more, you're going to start to see that polarization of ideology anyway, and it's going to be necessary for um, for people in general to say this is what I believe and this is what I stand for, and if they want to pass that on to other people and especially their children, it's really got to start becoming more and more their responsibility to do that. Right, and that's the whole thing is I, I think, however, I mean, if you believe in some kind of last days or whatever, but um, I, just, I just think that people, you can believe in what you believe and you can grow stronger in what you believe and you can share what you believe without trying to enforce what you believe on other people. I, yeah, I, like, I, I think, I don't see why you can't just... That's where all the strife comes from in the world, is where people refuse to integrate. You can integrate without assimilating right. other people's ideas. You can integrate into a community and into a society and still maintain all of your ideas, values, religious beliefs, practices. Yeah. I had a really... Unless, really I think you're just like, unless you think you, that your ideas are so weak or that you're, you're not strong enough in your beliefs that, that they can't stand up to diversity... Which shouldn't be the case. I mean, you well, should be. It, it's it, there's no glad doubt that to it, show that up it is different. that it is a a greater test of a person's faith to be thrown into an environment like that. But that's something I think that. But even that as we, a missionary, it helps that, you. Yeah, we that I th that I think that we as members of the church can really value members of the church who live outside of Utah. I think really understand what that means and and knows how va know how valuable that can be. One of the things that that I always really appreciated was. The opportunity that I had at BYU to take to study a religions of the world class that really opened my mind to um, a lot of really great ideas and thinkers out there um, that it kind of made me realize, you know, as members of the church, we say that this is a true church, and it is. In, or at least that's what I believe. Right. In in my in my heart, I believe that it's a true church. But that doesn't mean that it's perfect. Um, and and I don't think I think if you go back and you look at all the teachings of the prophets, if you go back and you look at at the way at the history of the church, you recognize that there are a lot of really really crappy things that the church has done, really crappy things that have happened in the church. Not as a result of the church being imperfect, but as a result of the, the people running the church trying to do their very, very best, but making mortal human mistakes. And if we expect, as members of the church, anything different than that, then we're, we're kind of um, forgetting what the plan of salvation is all about, which is...
to come here to learn from our mistakes and to grow from it. Well, and if you can keep that in mind too, like for you, like if you have that in mind, then you can apply that to whatever your current situation is and say, okay, I guess I shouldn't freak out too much or try and, you know, ab about whatever issue because this could be one of those right. instances or well, moments well, where, or even where, you know, we look back and say, mm, maybe that wasn't quite what we thought it was. Right. I think a lot of times in the, in just in general, and this is real, I think every human being does this, we tend to get so focused on the moment that we're in that we, we stop realizing that there's a lot that happened before and a lot that's going to happen after. And I guess the way that I look at a lot of these things is, look, I'm, I'm okay maybe even giving up some of my civil rights in order to make sure that other people are getting their civil rights and hope that there's kind of this balance that happens to where like we finally the... get to the point where we're where we where we all have the have the same rights but what, how would you give up civil rights if somebody else gets civil rights <clears throat> i think the like only in what situation i think the only uh, thing and i'm thinking of this kind of i think from the perspective of a lot of, of, of a lot of members of the church that when they feel like that their um, civil rights aren't being respected in in that they're not you know they're not able to voice their opinion when they do voice their opinion they get shut down I mean there have been um, there would, were but how well, there were only, be able to I'll give you an example opinion. there are some okay. LDS churches that were um, vandalized and burned in the Bay Area because of Prop 8 um, really yeah people that are people that are trying <laughs> that's to that's not good <laughs> you know trying trying to intimidate members of the church um, and actually not just Mormons but Catholics and and you know uh, Asian Americans, there's a big Asian American contingency in California that's been against Prop 8 and so forth. But but there's still you're still able, I mean legally, you're able to voice your opinion. Sure. There's always going to be assholes out there who are going to try right. and attack you or shut you down for what you believe. But, Basically what we're, I, I don't know, like the American way you would think is just that there's a standard that everybody gets to, you know, everybody gets the same level of rights and you have a lot of different opinions out there and you want to make sure that all of those opinions are being heard and that they're being valued.